Whom are you rousing? To what are you rousing them? How often I remember that word. It was a rousing moment. This person was so capable of rousing everybody around. As you can see, people, good morning. We've got a lot of cloud, especially thick cloud. I can barely make out the contours of the Golan Heights inside the cloud. And I won't even try, I think, to ask to see that on the screen. But I can see it here. Yes, you can see it on the screen very little. On the very right, those thorns just above them, let me line them up with the, no, I can't, yeah. The, the, those um, thorns there are more or less at the level of the, on the right side, on the level of the Golan Heights uh, contours. So what we're going to do is we're going to climb a bit more and just enjoy it. And it's a pity, I had a, a temptation down there near the beehives. You can see them down there to start the live stream. What's going on? So I, had, um, I wanted to start the live stream and it's a, really a little pity I didn't <laughs> because, well, who knows? When I got up here, just as I put down the tripod to get ready, I saw there was a little herd of pigs here just under that bush there in the center of the screen. They didn't give me too much time, so I just figured we saw some already in other occasions and there'll be another occasion and we'll see more. But I wasn't able to take advantage of the moment I wasn't ready. The camera wasn't set up and rolling, so that's life. So let's head up a little bit more, get a little more height, a little bit more blood circulating here. It's not that chilly today. It's, uh, it was uh, one of those last few days, it was like seven or eight degrees. Now it's up to about 14, I think, or 13 degrees. That's centigrade Celsius, not Fahrenheit. So zero is freezing and uh, you 32 is freezing in Fahrenheit, but it doesn't work out just like that. You have to do a little calculation. So you divide by five, so that's, let's say, less than three, and you multiply by nine, and that's 27, and you add 32. So it's under 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So in that sense, it's almost like Irish summer weather. And they'd be laughing at me if they saw me dressed like this in that kind of weather. Let's go up the steep spot here to get that blood circulating. A new thistle. Be careful of the thorns. There was a ton of this bush and I didn't get to send it to my brother on Sunday. And I think we had one of those in our farm when I was <laughs> a child and I remember the thorns and I remember that some birds nested in it, small little birds for protection from the from the predator birds and we used to call it furs I'm not sure if it's the same one or not the leaves seem to be like that I'd have to check it out or maybe one of you know but last Sunday we were walking in Wadi Amud and there was tons of this the sides of the hills were covered and all yellow. Really beautiful. Be careful of your step here, people. So I'm sure the piglets are long gone. Well, they were pretty big actually. So they have been growing. Remember a few months ago, we saw all the little piglets or maybe it was less than two months ago. Time flies. Let's check out the sky. Nope, nothing doing here. There you have a place you know very well. And then you have the Mount Beatitudes across from us. Straight line across the center of the screen. Swat. 
the hills over Lebanon. Let's keep going here, if you're up to it. Another one of those little thistles. So today, there's somebody very warm in our hearts. Since student days, on the 28th of January, we always remember in a remarkable person. He was from high society, he was brilliant. His parents were figuring that he'd be, have a top position in the empire, they had connections. The family was of nobility. Not high nobility, but sufficiently involved to be noticed by people in high places. And we're talking about a good 800 years ago and they were in Italy and they had plans and at the same time there was uh, an incredible young Spaniard who was filled with zeal and we have his footprints in in Jerusalem through his followers. The Ecole Biblique was founded by his followers. That famous biblical school. Now you can see a little bit of Mount Arbel over the brow of the hill here. We'll see more in a minute. So this got the attention of Thomas who was a brilliant student at the Sorbonne in Paris. And he studied under another famous guy who was probably the greatest scientist of the time, Albert the Great. He was considered to be the man of the greatest encyclopedic and profound knowledge. And he was teaching in Cologne. He was a German from, born in a little town on the side of the Danube in Bavaria, or close to Bavaria, near Ulm. Well, anyway, this guy is called Tommy. And Tommy decided his heart, he recognized his heart was touched by Dominic. And Tommy says, I'm going with them, which meant he was becoming more or less like a monk and it meant he was going to be a priest. And his family didn't like that at all, at all, at all, at all. So he had a bunch of brothers and they locked him up in a castle. They had castles, you know, that kind of family. And we had a couple of barns, but they had castles. So anyway, Tommy was locked in there and they put in this lovely little girl in with him. And he was a teenager, older teenager. And as soon as he saw her coming in, you know what he did? He went to the fireplace, pulled out a burning log and told her to get out. She didn't want to get singed. His family didn't know what to do next. So the clouds are beginning to lighten up here. We'll keep our eye on them. Let, let me, I keep walking upwards and you keep watching the clouds and tell me if there's something going on. So, he became an extraordinary scholar. And at the age of, I would say 21, 22, he wrote a small text on metaphysics, philosophical metaphysics. He was a great student of Aristotle and Plato. And we're talking about the time of Maimonides and the great Muslim scholar Averroes, time of great cultural cross-fertilization. And, So Thomas had his way and his family had to recognize that and I'm sure they're proud today, not of what they did to him, but of him as a member of the family. And he's St. Thomas Aquinas, our little Tommy. And he died very young. He was only like 46 or 47. On his way to a council, the Pope called him to be a consultor at a big council of bishops but he died on the way there. 
Wow, so this is all grown up now since we were here last. I don't know when we were here last, maybe before Christmas. So we're looking northwest there for those clouds, but they're getting illuminated from southwest, southeast. So we're still expecting a little more action here. So he was uh, declared a doctor of the church because of his incredible teaching. He's one of the greatest minds in history uh, in both philosophy and in theology. And another great feature of our, this wonderful fellow called Tommy, St. Thomas Aquinas, that he had an extraordinary open mind. And he, in all of his treatises, or in lots of them, he actually put up all the objections of everybody who argued against him. And so he would put up a thesis and then he would say, but against this thesis, this scholar says this. And this other scholar says this, and this other scholar says this. Then he gives the reasons for his thesis, and then academically, he dismantles all the other thesis, which is amazing intellectual prowess. And his little book of metaphysics, I wonder if it has been uh, outdone. Obviously, there are new approaches to metaphysics, but it remains a major classic and not easy to read on being and essence. So, I'm sorry for giving you a lot about our friend Tommy, but when we were students, oh yes, now we have action on the water. When we were students, you know, he was absolutely a great ideal. He was so committed to the Lord, decisively committed as a young man for his integrity, his moral integrity, his purity. And for a number of reasons, he's called the angelic doctor. One, because he was so dedicated he had the purity of the angel, so to say, as much as you can get that on earth. And then he had the brilliance of the angels in the sense that he was so brilliant. It was like, who could argue like this? Who could talk like this? I need to show you our fishermen. They're working out there. Earlier on, they had a big bright light when I was leaving the house. So I think they were using the light to deal with the fish. Look at them there in the little boat. Those are our fishermen people and they're working their nets. It looks like there's another one further out there that's coming this way. Not up the hill, but at least into the shore, towards the shore. You were the two big tall uh, palm trees and we're looking down upon them. And the other single one over here, there we are near the outdoor boat altar. And we often look up at that and now we're looking down at it. The different perspectives. Duke and Altum, we love to be inside there and now we're right on top of it. So there's a third reason why he's called the angelic doctor. And it is because he is, um, he is one of those who, from scriptural sources, treated of the angels in the most magnificent way and um, has a very powerful uh, academic treatment of the angels. Hey, we're not doing too bad, despite all the cloud. Look at that, people. Look at that treasure. Look at that treasure. Look at that treasure. You know, it's amazing. Like we don't like clouds, but still the clouds in our life can become the scenario for incredible treasure, spiritual treasure growth. Just like Thomas Aquinas, you know, Tommy. They gave him a beautiful teenage girl, delightful. She was all ready for him. And he said, no, my decision is my heart is completely for God and she don't belong in my room, so she better leave. You can imagine those guys, like how that impacted them. 
I think we need some people like that. Let's pray for young people today that they will have this angelic purity. I mean, as human beings, but to have this incredible, clear, uh, single-heartedness, single-heartedness, in the preparation for marriage, because they need single-heartedness in marriage, and single-heartedness, if God is uh, in His providence, is calling them to to consecrate their lives completely to Him. So we all need single-heartedness, the married and the consecrated souls in by vows, and also the single people. Because the single people also, their heart belongs to God. And they're in a situation, maybe they will find a partner, or some people find a partner in their 50s, and other people, uh, you even have marriages later in their 70s. It's amazing. I, I remember one guy, and uh, his wife had passed away years earlier, and he got married in his 70s in New Hampshire, and then another man from Chicago. And I remember he got married on the 1st of November, about 10 years ago, and he's well into his 70s. And his, his wife has since passed away, and they were so good together. It was a, a marvelous thing, you know. So to be single is also a very special calling of our heart. Where does our heart go? And we can't just give it cheap substitutes. It needs extraordinary uh, goals. Our heart needs big goals. Hey, let's walk a little bit more here. And I get another spot because I can't stand the tripod here very well. Or when I could shorten one of the legs, but let's find a level spot. And then I want you to look at the letter to the Hebrews. That text we have today. And a lot of those themes are already clear to us because we spoke about them in the last couple of weeks abundantly. But there are some amazing words there. Migdal looks a little sleepy there. You pick out the word you'd like now. You don't have to write it down. Just pick it out for yourself. And I want to pick one word that's um, that uh, really got my attention this morning. So let's go down here a little bit. This is rough ground, people, so just hold on to your armchair there or your pillow. And then the cows have left their little patties here, so you have to watch out where you're walking, you know, but you don't have your slippers on. Okay, this is a little more level here. So, stop here for a second so you can see this beautiful sky. And I can pull out my text here. And I want to get this perfect really right for you guys. Oops. There we go. Oh, looks like the sun is there, is it? Yeah, it's already 10 to 7, so the sun should be rising up. But it's not the sun yet, it's just a lot of light there. <laughs> so then, uh, we have this word in here, down a little ways. You have chosen your words, that's great. So it's toward the end of the text. I have heard it more often than I have read it, so I wasn't remembering clearly where it was. There's one of our fishermen boat heading south. So the word that really struck me today was, we must consider how to rouse one another to love and good works. That's a very strong word. We must consider how to rouse one another. And many times on these chats, the word has echoed encouragement, to encourage others, to encourage the discouraged. And there could be a lot of people that aren't discouraged. They're just like humming along, you know, rouse them. <laughs> and then we have Duke and Altum right there. And what's the word 
What's the word Dukanaltan? What does that mean? It means go out into the deep. Look at the way Jesus roused the disciples. He didn't rouse them like rebels to take on the Romans militarily, politically, but he roused them. Imagine how Tommy was roused for Christ, for the gospel, for God. So the rousing is by grace, but it's also people like Dominic and other Dominicans that he would have met. Capacity to rouse others. So let that be our word today, to rouse. This is a powerful word. Look at the way the sun is coming up to rouse us into life. I made a comment a moment ago that Migdal looks sleepy. Let's look back at it again. I'm not trying to offend any Migdal people, but here in the little hazy morning, you know, if you were in Ireland now at this kind of situation, you might start seeing some house, a little smoke coming out the chimneys when I was a kid. So people were beginning to get up. And when the sun would be up, then people would be roused. And Duke and Altum is go out into the deep. It's encouragement, a word of encouragement. And this is more than a word of encouragement for the discouraged. This is rousing the sleepy. This is rousing the ones that are humming along, you know, no hurry, no pressure, rouse them. And this whole text right now that we're reading of Hebrews in chapter 6, 10, chapter 10. And it's just like, you know, six or seven verses. And it's so intense because it brings together um, the consequences. First of all, a type of synthesis of all that is being discussed up to now in the letter to the Hebrews. And this community is hearing now a synthesis of all of that has been established. And it's moving them. We have confidence of entrance into the sanctuary by the new and living way he opened up for us through the veil. And our hearts have been sprinkled clean from an evil conscience. You know, rousing people to greatness, to big hearts, to greatness of heart, rousing them. Rousing them. That's a wonderful word. I, I like that word. Rousing them. Because our hearts have been cleaned from evil. When we're involved and we're undecided about selfishness, and egotism and things that are below our dignity and messing with stuff that's not ours, that's in the internet, that's everywhere. Thoughts in our heart, memories that we have from mistakes of the past. We're putting fetters on ourselves. It's like having a, a wonderful eagle, but it's chained. There's a steel rope holding it to a pole. And we need to be roused. We need to be free from an evil conscience. Our bodies washed in pure water. Again, you have the mikvah idea there. Let us hold unwaveringly to our confession that gives us hope that he who made the promise is trustworthy. And now we have our line again. We must consider how to rouse one another to love and good works. And imagine how many millions were roused by what started here at the Sea of Galilee. How many millions were roused? Look here at the Sea of Galilee. Magdala, Mary Magdalene, how she was roused. Look at Peter and Andrew over here from Bethsaida and James and John and Philip and Nathaniel and Thomas. And they were all different characters. We talked about that before. They weren't all made in uh, like matches in a matchbox. They weren't all the same. They were quite, quite, quite different. They actually didn't fit together very well, but they were all transformed. And there was a path of light opening up before them because they were roused. And we have this beautiful line from Psalm 24. Lord, this is the people that longs to see your face. This is the people that longs to see your face. So people, I'm going to start heading this way a little bit now towards the sun. Let's head towards the light. And I want to say thank you very much for joining us. We will leave the gospel passage for uh, this afternoon for the Mass. I just didn't get to it now, although it's also, uh, there's a, a, a lot of parallels there, actually. Uh, there are a lot of very, very inspiring lines. And we, I took all the time telling you about our friend Tommy. And we used to celebrate him on this day every year, you know. 
so uh, forgive me I did have the idea to do a little bit of Lexio Divina but now you want to do it more so we'll we'll get there we'll get there we did that yesterday we had started out with a little of that so it's amazing that we didn't have rain for the last few days but all the all this uh, lush growth is all incredibly wet we will find a way through it here and we're expecting rain uh, this evening and tomorrow and Saturday so that's why I wanted to come up here at Mount Arbel because when it's raining it gets very sticky and suddenly your boots are carrying a half a ton of clay that's also sticky and then it's not as enjoyable and as viable and you have to spend time cleaning it instead of doing other good things so people this is a beautiful morning here on Mount Arbel in Galilee and thank you so much for joining so we'll say goodbye now and see you later alligators how about that God bless you. By the way, thank you all the people for sharing two or three days ago, but yesterday you didn't share that much. Maybe you were all excited about the, about the, um, the Lexio, so you forgot to share, but that's okay. Today is a new day. God bless you. See you later.